The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name are written in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. The Lord be with you. Well, this week on our church calendar is St. Michael's and All Angels Sunday. And as I reflected on angels, I, I recalled that angels seem to be everywhere. I mean, there's so many pieces of artwork that are out there that, that are, are, have angels on them. They capture our imagination in cartoons. They, they're little figurines that we can buy at many gift shops. Little pins that we wear as signs of, of guardian angels that are, are with us all the time. They're, they're sculptures from ages and ages past. I mean, we see them all over, but I would contend that, that God continues to speak love and the words and actions of those around us, through the angels around us. And oftentimes, we fail to recognize those angels that have come into our lives to speak those words. There are several different types of angels. Uh, the first one uh, is an angel that, um, that comes along in those times when we need it most, those, those guardian angels, so to speak, the ones that are supernatural type occurrence happens and, and we're not quite sure why it happened or how it happened but something happened and we really don't tell anyone else about it because it's so weird and yet so so good at the same time that it's it's scary and we don't think anyone else will believe us that it actually happened now have I confused you enough or, or have any of you guys under understand what I'm talking about okay okay several of you know where I'm at then with this well when I was in college Patricia and I helped move uh, one of our classmates out. And so we got up at five in the morning and, and moved, their, moved their stuff um, out of their dorm room and, and headed out to, an, to their apartment a couple hours away and um, moved their stuff in, went back and packed all, all of our stuff up into a truck and, and Patricia was in her vehicle and I was in mine and we started heading back towards home. And that was about midnight before we left. And so we're driving along, and it was just a tiring day, and you know, kind of sitting there all alone, so no one to really chat with, and sitting there, and oh man, first off, you know that feeling when you're driving or when you're doing anything, and that, that one eye just kind of says, well, if I shut, you know, you can keep this one up and still pay attention. Okay, good, I'm not the only one that's risked my life. So. You know, then, then you know that the other one soon decides, well, if that one's shut, then, then I should be shut too. And so you're driving along and driving along and, man, exhausted. So I look in the seat next to me that was empty and I noticed that there was someone sitting there. Kind of like, oh, cool, You've got company. There was no one in the car, I promise. So I look forward and I'm like, wait a minute, there was no one sitting in with me when I left uh, earlier. So I look back over and the, whatever was there was gone. And so I kept driving and, and at, from then on out, I was wide awake. It was, it was the moment, it, it, it was scary. And, and, but that's one time that I've experienced that angel that I could not explain. I could not explain that angel away other than to say it was something or sent by God to, to awaken me. And, and so I continued on and while well, I'm still here today and I was safe and sound at home, but I was definitely scared awake. There's another type of angel and this one's much different. Now angel comes from the word angelos in Greek and which means a messenger. It's a messenger usually sent by God, and that messenger um, can bring praise and tidings of something new and, and cool coming up. It can bring instruction, or an angel can um, issue warnings. If 
you don't do this, this will happen. Much like the angel that we see in, uh, in our birth narrative with, with Mary and, and, and the baby Jesus, where you know, the angel comes and lets Mary know what's going to happen and what she's supposed to do. But the, these angels, too, come to us in the form of friends. Friends who come and, and speak prophetic words that are true. Sometimes they're hurtful. Other times they're life-giving and give us direction for our lives. Still, there are other types of angels. There's another type. In Genesis, way early on, Abraham encounters three men at the door of his tent. So Abraham goes out and he doesn't just say, oh, hey, how's it going? I mean, he's out in the middle of nowhere and three men have appeared at his tent and he bows down and welcomes them into his tent and welcomes them to his place. And he calls to one of his servants and he says, you know, get some water for these guys. They've been traveling. And, and he looks to his wife and say, says, you know, grab the finest flour and, and bake them some bread, something to eat. And he welcomes them in and he sits down and, and he has a meal and he chats with them for a while and he invites them to stay for a couple days and, and they're there with him. He welcomes them in, invites them in people he's never met before. He gives them the needs that he had, that he gives them what they need, water and food. And he sits and I believe he probably chatted with them for a while because by the end of it, he asked for, for a favor and he asked that when they stop somewhere that, that they visit his, his nephew, who was uh, his nephew Lot. And, and the story goes from there the, of Sodom uh, being destroyed. But, but he encounters these three men and he welcomes them in.